As AI revolves, it's getting easier to build and automate the creation of applications. Around in February, we had taken a look at Vectorshift, which is a no-code AI builder, and it's something that allows you to design, prototype, build, deploy, and manage generative AI workflows and automation with the help of a drag-and-drop UI. You can create workflow assistance for SEO generation, automate tasks like sending out emails, or even responding to them, and even create chatbots. Now, this is just the top of the iceberg. There's so much more that you can do with it. For example, take a look at this demo video, which showcases how you can automate a type form to Slack workflow with Vectorshift. Here we go. So this is the payload that comes back every time the type form is triggered. We need to connect the actual questions to the actual inputs that we have, right? So we have three questions. What is your name? What is your email and your inquiry? We have those fields right here. Let's connect them to the input fields. So name, email, and inquiry. There we go. We are connected. So let's go ahead and actually see this in practice. I have the test Slack right here, and I have the type form here. Let's go ahead and try this out. So let's say my name is Albert. My email is albert at vectorshift.ai. And say I have a pretty big inquiry on data is not actually not loading in the Vectorship platform. There we go. I wrote kind of a response that says, you know, I've encountered a bug in Vectorshift. I'm not able to integrate my data. Let's go ahead and submit this. There we go. We have the trigger successfully deployed with my name, my email, and a summary of the problem. And we've tagged my co-founder Alex because it is a bug report due to the problem with the integration platform that I wrote about. Now, wasn't that amazing? There's so much more possibilities to vector shift, and it's something that I'm going to be showcasing as I design and prototype my own automation once again with vector shift throughout today's video. So with that thought, guys, stay tuned and let's get straight into it. Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a patron this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community, as well as with myself. You get access access to daily AI news, resources, giveaways, and so much more. If you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look and exploring as to how you can use Vectorshift further in detail. We're going to be utilizing the no code AI builder, this drag and drop UI to help facilitate the development of a search engine slash chatbot on top of company data. Now, in my previous video, I went over more in depth on explaining the capabilities. However, with today's video, we're going to be exploring the more practical use cases as to what you can do with Vectorshift and the different types of applications that could be created with it. So let's get started. Make sure you create an account. Once you have done that, you'll be then sent over to this page, which is the dashboard as to where you're going to be working with your pipelines. This is the Gmail automation pipeline that we had created previously in my last video, which I truly recommend that you take a look at because I explain each feature further in detail. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Next, you want to go and click on this new button, which will basically create a new pipeline from scratch. But you can actually choose other templates if you're going to be utilizing this platform for other use cases. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at that. But in this case, we're going to be creating a pipeline from scratch for our automation. Now, once you are here in the interface builder, you can utilize different nodes such as an LM node. You have a knowledge base that you can add, integrations from other plugins, and so much more. 
these are different tools that you can use to create your workflows. But in this case, we're going to be creating a search engine slash chatbot type of workflow. And we're going to be automating such as answering questions, queries on a particular company. We might even use VectorShip as an example. So what we can do first is start off by placing an input node as well as an output node, which is typically something that you would use for a workflow. Next, we're going to head over to the knowledge base category, and this is where we're going to be placing two knowledge base nodes. Now, I'll explain this later as to why we're adding a second one. But for now, let's take a look at this node, which is the base reader. Now, what this basically means is that this is a node that's going to be used to centralize the data wherever it sits. So in this case, you can create a knowledge base for your chatbot that you're going to be using. And this is a knowledge base that we're going to be using so that it is providing context to our chatbot so that whenever customers or clients, whoever it may be, is asking questions about our website or our company data, it's going to be able to provide relevant context to that query. So what we're going to do is that you can basically create a documentation about whatever company that you're working with. This is just like a basic search engine chatbot that I'm using or creating for VectorShift as an example. But you, you can basically go and create a new knowledge base. You can add a name, a description, and you're going to be able to give the data based off of root URLs. So for example, if I click on the knowledge base for the documentation that I created, you can click on edit knowledge base. And if you are to click on this, if you go and search through different documents, you can add documents, you can add different types of integrations. So you can select a Gmail, like the other pipelines that we've created, or you can add other integrations such as the data that is sitting on Discord, Gmail, Google Calendar, Airtable, as well as many other integrations. Now, if you go back, you can go to URL and you can even paste, paste in URL, for example, for VectorShift. So if I have a link for tutorials, I would add that to this documents URL. And you can even go back and you can even scrape different sorts of knowledge or data from YouTube, archive, Git, Wikipedia, or even recursive URL, where it's going to be recursively scrapping information on a daily, weekly, or even a monthly basis. But in this case, since I already created my knowledge base, I'm going to be just simply collecting the knowledge that I have gathered from other UR all the URLs off of this website. So this is going to be used as the context behind any user queries. Now, what we're going to be doing next is adding an LM node. And this is where I'm going to be adding an open AI node. This is where you can actually use all the models that they have provided from OpenAI. You're also able to integrate open source models. You can use all these other large language models. So in this case, what we're going to be doing now is having the large language model process queries and answer questions with the relevant information based off of our knowledge base. So what you can do afterwards is that you can have it set so that there is a system prompt as well as a prompt template that you can use for answering these queries. So I went along and provided the large language model a system prompt where this is the instruction that I gave it that you're an internal chatbot for VectorShift answering questions for internal employees as well as helping other people with different queries that they may have. Now this is just this basic generic system instruction that you would give any large language model for replying to certain like prompts or queries that are being sent from the customer itself. Now at the end, I'm also going to be providing it URLs. And this is where the most important part comes where we connect all these separate things. This is where you need to have important variables set. Firstly, you need to make sure that you have a variable for questions. So this is where you can then click enter and then add a variable for questions. So this variable is going to be named questions and we're going to be connecting this to the base node, which is this input over here. And we can just keep this over here. And secondly, we're going to be then having it so that it provides context. So what we can do is then just type in context, click enter again, and then add the context variable. So this will then connect the knowledge base with this. So we can then have it set to the context. And then lastly, we're going to be then utilizing the second knowledge base reader. And this is where after the large language model answers questions, 
for the user or the client. We're going to be then providing URLs. So I had this response written as a system instruction. At the end of the response, list a few resources, titles, and URL links that are relevant to answer that you generate in this format. So I'm going to be then having this next variable you can see that is named resources. And this is another variable that we're going to create. All right, there we go. So now we have these three variables. So I can connect this one over here to this knowledge base. And we're going to then add another knowledge base, which is going to have and compile all the resources on vector shift. So whenever some client has a question on the marketplace, it will then provide the URL for the marketplace. So now I have created two knowledge bases. So this first documentation that we have over here will refer to this documentation page, which will give you insights on each and every aspect of the VectorShift platform. And then this new resource knowledge base is gonna refer to different URLs. So it is having it so that this knowledge base will have it linked to each and every URL on VectorShift. So it will provide all the URLs that are needed or essential for the system instruction or the system prompt that is given. So we can see that this will provide the URLs, whereas this will provide the knowledge or the context to answer questions. And once that is set and done, we can then connect this response to the end node and we can then actually start and try it out. So what we can do next is just simply click save. Once you have done that, then we can actually click on deploy where you can deploy this as a chatbot or as a search. But what, before we even get to that, we're gonna go to details, give it a name. You can actually share user permissions. So if you're interested, you can share it with other people, but we're gonna test this out to see if it works. So I'm gonna ask it, what is back there shift? And let's see if it's gonna be able to answer this. And I'm gonna click run and let's see how fast it can do it. And there we go. It describes what vector shift is, but you can see that it gives you a good response as to what height vector shift is. Now, something cool to note is that if you are to click deploy as a chatbot, you're going to be able to export this as a widget into any other workflow. So you can give it a type of description and then we can just simply click save. Once you have done that, you can then go to functionality and style how your chatbot would look. So you can see that it's similar to how a ChatGPT type of interface would be. You can export this widget so that you can share this chatbot or you can embed it into a website and you can even manage conversations with it. So in this case, we can save it. And if we are to deploy this, you can see that you can open this chatbot up to see if it works and you can deploy it on this chatbot like this website where you can create a new chat and ask it, what is vector shift and what is the marketplace? And we can click enter and it'll take a couple of seconds to reply to explain what is vector shift. It'll even give me a description on the marketplace. And that's about it for today's video on VectorShift. This is just another simple guide as to what you can do with it. You can see that I created a simple chatbot or a search engine or even like a user query onboarding chatbot that can help assist your company in many different ways. It's just like another simple way for you to integrate AI into your company. And I always get these responses as to what you can do with AI, but this is like another practical use case that you can actually try to help onboard different people. You can even have it so that it automates different workflows and so much more. Now I'm obviously going to be making more videos on stuff like this because it's something that's really cool and it's super easy to actually implement. So I'll leave all the links as to what I used in today's video in the description below. Make sure you check out the Patreon page if you haven't already. This is a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest subscriptions completely for free as well as our private discord. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Also check out our Twitter because this is a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.